Hello, uh, I'm Paul Beckwith. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, weather extremes uh, that we've been getting mostly across uh, North America and that are uh, in the pipeline over the next week. Um, and the important thing to remember is that these aren't just, uh, th this isn't just a weather event. These are, this is a climate event. It's due to climate change. How does climate change uh, cause uh, deep freezes? Well, we all know greenhouse gases, uh, mostly from human emissions, are going up into the atmosphere, warming the overall climate, uh, 0 0.8 degrees uh, Celsius uh, in the last hundred odd years. Um, and uh, but the thing is, is the uh, Earth does not, um, the temperature on the Earth does not increase uniformly. We all know the equator uh, stays about the same year round. Um, the temperature up at the pole, at the poles, the North Pole, the South Pole, is increasing uh, at higher rates than than uh, any other region on the planet. Um, specifically, the uh, Arctic. Uh, what we've what we've hap what's happened is that the Arctic sea ice and snow cover has been exponentially declining and has declined enough to uncover vast areas of ocean that's darker and permafrost that is darker. So those regions are absorbing a lot more solar energy, so the Arctic is warming three, four, five times faster than the equator, um, or than the, than the, the global mean. Um, and because it's increasing that much more, it's decreasing the temperature gradient between the Arctic and the equator. Um, that temperature gradient sets up the jet streams. It causes uh, heat to move from the warm equator to the colder poles sets because of the rotation of the earth and the Coriolis force it's uh, directed to the right in the northern hemisphere it sets up the jet streams uh, because the temperature gradient smaller there's less um, less fluid motion in the atmosphere and in the ocean currents from the equator regions to the north pole to the uh, arctic regions so the jet streams in the um, atmosphere slow down the eastward component decreases and they become much wavier and these waves get stuck in position determined by the land ocean contrast so this is what we're seeing so I will demonstrate this on my computer monitor uh, here um, so basically uh, what we have here is on this side here we have the temperature let me just uh, get it to the right position. Okay, so what we have here, okay, there, this is a bit better. So what we're doing is we're cycling through the, um, we're going from basically now uh, for seven days. It's the global forecast system model. We're looking at the temperature anomaly which is the change, which is the deviation in temperature from the expected temperature, the expected temperature being derived from the long term, the 30 year mean. Um, so the red areas are 20 degrees Celsius or 36 Fahrenheit, um, warmer than normal. The purple areas are 20 degrees Celsius, cooler than normal or 36 degrees Fahrenheit, cooler than normal. Um, so what we're seeing here is so during the week, you know, we're on Monday. Every 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 update of the screen is three hours. We're seeing this plug of cold air moving southward over North America, coming as far as the Mex going into Mexico, going into the Gulf of Mexico, covering Florida. So we're seeing Florida um, being very very cold, and this area being very very cold, and. Uh, why is this happening? It's because of the way the jet stream is configured. So this is a jet stream um, propagating around the planet. Um, you typically measure it at, um, at, it's up near the tropopause, which is a division between the lower troposphere and the upper stratosphere. Um, and uh, the reds are the higher speed. So you can see these big waves being formed. So this would be cold air coming down here. This will be warm air coming up here. So California 
we have the jet stream bringing all the moisture further north and coming down, bypassing the west coast. So California has been in this uh, massive record drought, 150 year drought. Um, and it's supposed to be their rainy season, they're just not getting the rain and the storms are not reaching the Sierra Nevada to deposit uh, and build up the snowpack there. Um, so this is a big problem. Um, and uh, so we're getting these large temperature swings and large temperature cycling and the Arctic is massively warm. The Arctic, the whole Arctic region, Northern Canada, uh, Alaska, uh, Labrador, um, is very very warm um, like I say you know the reds are 20 degrees warmer than normal you can see the the temperature swing here if you've been following this the Arctic temperature um, relative to the normal value um, so this is what's happening this is a pattern that's that we're seeing this is why it's being set up from the jet streams we know the jet streams are bending from climate change from reduced sea ice and snow cover um, this is the global picture um, so you can see, um, you know, although we have our cold areas in North America, um, there's, a, there's an enormous cold area, anomalously cold area over Asia. Europe's pretty mild. Um, there's also warm areas over China and Australia, as we know, is undergoing the heat wave. And look at the Arctic region. It's just massively warm. Um, there's a couple regions in Antarctica that are also the same way. Um, so the, uh, so, so this is a global phenomena, it's not just a local to North America phenomena. It's not just another cold spell, it's not just a polar vortex, uh, um, type thing, which is a nor not, I mean, people are saying polar, it's a polar vortex, well the polar vortex goes around the pole, basically the cold air has come down from the Arctic. Um, and this is a positive feedback to further distortion of the jet streams. The jet streams are basically being ripped apart, fractured, cold air is not being separated from warm air, so the cold air is trickling down, warm air is going up. This is representing an equalization of temperature in the northern hemisphere through our winter. Similar processes will do it during the summer. Um, and basically the, so basically the entire climate pattern of the globe appears to be shifting. My research um, on abrupt climate change uh, leads me to believe that we're undergoing an abrupt climate change to a much warmer overall planet. And if methane comes up in a big fashion in the Arctic, then it will take us to a much warmer world very quickly. Um, so let's see, so what is all this warm air in the Arctic doing? Um, so let me uh, show you what the sea ice is doing. So, so this is the sea ice, uh, this is the extent, um, and this is the normal um, increase of sea ice through the cold seasons. Um, this is based on the mean 81 to 2010 average. It's the, the gray shading is two standard deviations. The dashed line is the previous year. This is what's happening this year. So we're motoring along near about two standard deviations below. So the ice extent is not increasing uh, quickly and also the sea ice thickness is not increasing quickly. So let's have a look at some of the more details on the sea ice. Um, this is showing the motion of the sea ice, um, the actual movement of the sea ice. So we're seeing, you know, uh, it's 30, it's spe speed and drift. Um, this is from, for this year, so January to now, it actually projects out a week to early February. Um, so we're seeing red, typically the ice is moving down from the just north of the Canadian archipelago down and this is thick ice this is uh, it's not multi-year ice I think it's it's ridged ice it's thick ice but I think it's uh, young ice that's been fractured and broken up and pushed against the archipelago I don't think there's any multi-year ice left in the Arctic really um, and you can also see in the Bering Strait sometimes the flow is coming in so there's warm waters from the Pacific coming in Sometimes the flow is strongly going out, so it's exporting ice out. 
So the ice, so there's dynamic factors that are preventing a uh, really solid buildup of ice. And there's also, you know, the temperature is 20 degrees warmer than normal. So we're not getting that, we're not getting that deep freeze over the Arctic. Um, and uh, th so this is the ice thickness, like I said, um, the, from five meters here, you know, four, four and a half meters is a red, not much. Most of it is, uh, you know, two meters or under. Um, and these areas here, you know, in, are really struggling to build up ice. Normally the ice builds up here, builds up here more, but we're not, we're not seeing that. Um, and uh, so what does this mean to you and I in the next week or so? Well, if you're a homeowner, uh, make sure that you, um, Make sure that, you know, if you go into a freeze, make sure that you have water running in your taps so that you don't, uh, they don't freeze up. Um, some people say drain the pipes is the best way, but um, I don't think code dictates that the uh, hot and cold water pipes have to be sloped. Drain pipes certainly have to be sloped by code to drain the water out, but if you try to drain the water out of the hot and cold, there, there's probably pockets of water still sitting in the pipe. So use compressed air to blow it out if you're going that route otherwise just trickle it now you know notice that in some regions here you know regions that are that go actually change within the space of a few days from bright red to to dark purple um, and that's a 40 degree swing so this has a tremendous uh, negative effect on infrastructure you know on roads on pipelines on rail and so on um, so, so these, uh, this is a big factor. Um, I would not be surprised if we see, uh, more pipeline breakages and, um, more, um, uh, train wrecks. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I would expect the, the, the risk, uh, the frequency of occurrence, the risk of, of, of those events is increasing greatly, not just from the stress on the infrastructure from these uh, temperature swings of 40 degrees Celsius, which is 72 Fahrenheit, but also because of the increased uh, amount of traffic. Um, so I'll, I'll end off here for now and uh, stay warm. Um, you know, of course, if you're in Australia, you've got the opposite problem uh, right now, and I can get into that in a further video. Thank you. Thanks for now.